you are looking to find the perfect tool as a researcher, an academic, or a student, today I want to introduce you to my own website called SciToolHub. SciToolHub is basically a repository, a database for the different tools that I think are really useful as a researcher and as an academic. And to be able to search and find these tools, filter them to find the one that you specifically need. And then it includes a bunch of tutorials and other features that will be coming soon as well. So this is SciToolHub. Right now, there are 40 different tools that are available that you can find. You can see that the featured tool, one that I talk about really often on this channel, is Zotero. But there are also tools based on newly added, different types of category and uses as well. We can always search to find a specific tool or search for what you're looking for. So if you're looking for write a research article, you can press enter and search, and you're going to see a lot of different tools that could come up that could be helpful. Something like Jenny AI, Microsoft Word, BioRender for being able to create your illustrations, Grammarly as a grammar checker, a lot of different things that you could use. There are also different filters that you can apply. So you can use categories. So if you're specifically looking for like research communication, this would be like research writing, you can apply these filters. And you've seen that this is now narrowed down to more of those that relate to actually writing or communicating through figures. There are also uses. So this could be, we specifically want to write a research article. We could do that. And you can see that this has kept research communication up there. If we apply those filters, they're primarily things for writing research articles. Jenny AI is an AI writing tool, um, Grammarly, Microsoft Word, Penelope AI helps you check your research write articles or review articles, and then BioRender is something that can help you actually create figures. Now, if you also look at formats, there are different formats that are available. So an iOS application, this is an application for Apple, obviously, um, those that are website-based, desktop application, or if they're a programming language. And the icons for these different ones are here. So you can see this one is a website. This is Apple and Android application. And then this is a desktop version. So it has different ones that are available. There are also what is the cost associated with the tool. A free version means that there is a version of the software that you can use indefinitely for free. This obviously this often means that there are limited features available. So if you want more advanced features, you have to pay. So for example, Genie AIs, if you want unlimited AI generation, you have to pay for it versus in the free one, I think you get about 200 a month. Free trial means you can access the software for free, but it's a limited time. So you might have a seven day free trial. So there may only be seven days where you can access it for free and then you won't be able to have any access at all. And then paid means that there is no way to access it for free. So that's kind of the three different versions. There's also free, which means there is no paid version of that tool as well. And then there's a little bit of a description here, and then you can actually click to see more. So any of these websites will take you directly to a website. If there is a star um, or an asterisk on the website, that means that that is an affiliate link linked to that website. So if you click on it and you get um, and you go to that software and you choose to purchase or upgrade or any of those things, I can make a small commission based off of that. So just to let you know, I make it very clear. Um, so if you click any of these websites, it's going to open up in a new tab so you don't have to worry about always right clicking and opening it in a new tab. You can also see more. So these are pages that I've created to help you better know how to use this tool. So you can always go to the website from here. You can add a review if you wanna let other people know how you find this tool. It shows you the price. So this software has a free version that is not time limited. The format is a website and then the categories it's in and the uses. So several different uses that are available. If you want to find other um, tools that have the same uses, you can always just right click. We're gonna open it in a new tab or you can just click on it. And you can see these are the three different tools that have that same use. So if you're working on writing a research introduction, those are the other tools that you might wanna check out. In here, I also have how to use it um, as a 
researcher, academic, or student. So I will go through what I think are the good case uses of it. And then who is it best for? So especially if you're like struggling between multiple different tools, what are the things that I think um, are the things you should consider as in is that tool best for you? And then finally, my own YouTube tutorials. If you are looking for tutorials on a tool, come find it on Side Tool Hub, and you're gonna have all of my tutorials available below. If you click up here, it's gonna take you um, to YouTube, or you can go ahead and play it with Inside Tool Hub. If you just go to tools, you can see all of the tools are available here. So there are 40 in here right now. I will be adding more as I find them and as certain tools improve to be worth it. Obviously, I don't want this to become just every tool that could possibly be available for researchers. Um, I think that's just information overload. So these are specifically tools that I think add a benefit to researchers or are in some way better than some other tool that's already on here. So instead of showing you all of the possible AI summarization tools, I'm picking those that have specific benefits for researchers or for students. If you are wanting to get a discount on certain tools, this is also a good place to look up those discount codes if I have them. So I do work with certain of these tools um, and companies to one, be able to help them improve for you to be able to get the best experience, but also to be able to provide a discount for you. So for example, SciSpace is one that if you want a discount on their premium plan, I have the discount code right here for you. So if you don't wanna have to go find it in my YouTube channel, descriptions. Um, the discount codes are available so you can use SciGrad on SciSpace to get 40% off the annual premium plan. That's always a place where you can find those discount codes as well to be able to have them more easily accessible. Now if you want to do more browsing and you want to search specifically by categories or uses, I do have those available. So in the categories you can see up here there's several different categories that you may be interested in. If you're interested in data analysis, it's going to show the uses here and then it will show the tools that are available um, that I've added in for data analysis. So the, some of these are programming languages like Python, SQL, and R. Others are softwares, Jupyter Notebook, R Studio, Excel, things like that that can help you um, with your data analysis. And you can also look at uses. So if you look at uses, these are going to be organized by category. So if you're looking for how can I find literature, you can see all of these different tools that appear for finding um, literature. You can also favorite any of these tools. So if you're just browsing and you're like, oh, I wanna come back and look at this later, I can click uh, the star and favorite it. So let's say I favorited Research Rabbit. You do have to have an account to be able to do this so that I can track who's favorited what. Finally, if you are, if you know of a tool that you think belongs on Side Tool Hub, you think it has a benefit to all of researchers. I know a lot of you leave them in my YouTube comments and honestly, I don't look at my YouTube comments as much. So you can actually submit new tools to this and I will look at them. And if I think that they really do provide value to other researchers, I will add them in. So you do have to have an account to submit tools to, through. So if you create an account, you can go to submit and then you can go to tools. And so this is just basically um, information about the tool. If you own the tool, um, so say you're an owner of the tool, that gives me a little bit more information about um, how to contact you. And if you're just someone who uses the tool, just say I'm not affiliated with this tool, and then just give me the information about it. You can leave me a message about why you think it belongs um, or why you're interested in it or anything like that. And this helps me to be able to um, look at it and present it in a much more methodical way rather than just looking at my YouTube comments um, on these videos. The other thing you can do if you have an account is you can request content. So if you are someone that's like, oh, can you please make a tutorial on this? Or can you show me how to do this? You can come to submit, come to content request. You're gonna come to this page and you can write it in. What do you want? What are you looking for? And then request that content. Again, these are these two things you can only do if you have an account, but all accounts are free. There's nothing paid on this site right now, unless you wanna to donate to help with the like upkeep cost, but nothing is paid currently on this site. So everything is perfectly free and most things you can do without an account. There's just these few things if you actually want to submit data um, or information to me, I do need you to have an account to be able to validate that data. So if you're interested in templates for different tools, especially if the tool is very overwhelming, I will start including the templates that I have under these different tools. So for example, Notion is one of the tools that I know I have templates for. 
if I come into Notion, you will see resources here, and these will be the templates that I have. So if you're interested, do I have something for this tool? Um, you can come in, look at resources, and that's where that information will be. I will leave a link below um, to this site. It's just sidetoolhub.com. And let me know if there's any additional features you would like down below. There will eventually be tools available um, in this website as well, um, but that will be coming down the line. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.